against the normal logic. We are talking about the list that, that right now we have IFR 16 instead of I-17. We have spoken of the concept that uh, as for this, you will have finance list, but also have operating list. Don't worry about that. As for now, we'll start dealing with uh with, with actually in the book, the books of the Lizzie. And they, when you deal with the books of the Lizzie, you do not need to know on whether the lease is an operating lease or it is a finance lease. But later on, you will actually need to know the difference between operating lease and finance lease. But simply speaking, all you need to know right here is an operating lease is a lease which is not a finance lease. So to distinguish between the two, when you have the question uh, given to you, just check for the conditions of the finance lease. If they don't agree, then you say that it is an operating lease. And also, simply speaking, when you say it's the finance lease, a finance lease actually say that it, it is self-sustaining. It is a kind of self-sustaining. For example, let's presume one thing. The car maybe uh, is worth a thousand dollars, but you lease it, you lease it out to someone and someone pays you three hundred dollars, three hundred dollars each year for four years. If you take the total there, or maybe let's say for five years, you can have the amount of 1,500, which even if you discount it, it decreases, it will actually cover that 1,000, that is the total cost. So that way you can say, oh, it's a finance lease because actually that amount that is being paid can actually cover the full cost. So uh, that's just a single example, but also when dealing with the finance lease, you can speak of the years. Let's say an asset has a unit life of 10 years. Then you lease it out to someone. And that someone can save that asset for all 10 years. We believe that you are not a fool. You cannot just give someone one, your asset so that they, you buy it, then you give it to someone to stay until it dies. We believe that you are getting something that is worth, actually, or maybe that is more, that is worth more what you just gave out. So uh, those are just examples of the finance list. But I wouldn't want to actually dwell so much into that. But it's no issue. We can just go out and deal with that before proceeding with the computations. Let's use these 10 minutes uh, to deal with this before joining back and actually taking a deeper look into this. So, first of all, maybe let's take a look at these definitions. We have spoken of them a lot. Please. When we speak of the lease, I say simply a contract. When we speak of a lease, it's a contract or maybe part of a contract. There might be a document which, if you read, you find out that, out that there is a part of it is a lease and part of it maybe describes other things. So a lease is a contract or part of a contract that conveys the right to use an underlying asset. So when we speak of the lease, there will be the lesser, there will be the leasee, but also there will be an underlying asset that is moved from one party to another. That's why we say that conveys the right to use an underlying asset for a period of time in exchange for consideration. The lessee pays the lesser the consideration and in return, the lessee stays with the underlying asset and enjoys the rights of that asset. So that's why when we speak of the lesser, we say that the lesser is the entity that provides the right of use asset and in exchange receives consideration while the lessee is the one in need of that asset. So it is the entity that obtains the use of the right of use asset. That's why you have to note this in the books. If the lessee gets the asset, it does not recognize that asset. It recognizes the right of use. The lessee actually, the ownership remains with the lesser, but the lessee only has the right to use that asset. So the lessee is entitled to the right of use of that asset. Not of that, not, not that asset itself. So by having the right of that asset, uh, the lessee has to transfer consideration to the lesser. So what is the right of use assets? Right of use, usually shorten it is ROA. Right of use asset is the lessee's right to use an underlying asset over the lease thing. Now, before going to identifying a lease or what. I would just like you to know that uh, we usually have operating lease, but also we have finance lease. Let's take a look at the differences between these two before going to the principles. Of course, we'll find them out later, but uh, it's just fine. I usually find it useful to distinguish them at the very start. It becomes fine. So let's go and distinguish these. 
before going to computation. Yes, here. Yeah. Now, you see, here it's explained about laser accounting because as for the lease accounting, you did not need to distinguish between finance lease and operating lease. But let us just know the difference regardless of that. So simply speaking, uh, when we speak of the finance lease, it is a lease where substantially all of the risks and the rewards of the underlying assets transfer to the lease. Now do you see this? It's like someone has bought the, uh, the car maybe, and maybe he's transferring that car to you. Let's say you stay with that car for all of the period of the unit life of that asset. We believe that the guy has transferred risks to you, but in return, he has also transferred the returns because if you stay with that car, you will enjoy the returns from that car. Something we call the rewards. So if risk and the rewards are transferred to, from the lesser to the lessee, we say that it is a financial risk. Else, it is an operating lease. That's why we say an operating lease is a lease that does not meet the definition of a finance lease. Simple, as simple as that. Now, those ones were, were just political words. Now, let's go to the reality. You are in an exam. How do you identify that? The following are just examples on how to distinguish the two. For example, if I still lease states that a lease is probably a finance lease if one or more of the following apply. You can just take a look at these examples, relate to reality, and then you'll find out what I just spoke. For example, ownership is transferred to the leasee at the end of the lease. This is just an example. Okay? You have leased out the building to someone, and then maybe someone paid you rent for 30 years, and at the end of that, you just give it to them. You are not a fool to just give that to them without having seen that you have recorded you, you have already recouped the value of the asset you bought. So we believe that that the finance lease. We believe that the guy financed you, actually gave you the money to, the, to such an extent that no problem, you, you have no issue. You have recovered everything from your asset. That's an example. But also you're told here, the leasee has an option to purchase the asset for less than its expected fair value at the date of option becomes exercisable. This also makes a lot of sense. Someone, I buy, I buy maybe a machine and I, I leave it out to you. Then I tell you, use it for 10 years and after which that asset maybe would be worth $5 million, but I tell you to give me just $0.5 million. I'm not a fool again. I know that just give me that because I'll, I'll have already recouped my money, so no issue. So we, call, we also call that the finance lease. I hope you get the concept of the finance lease now. But also, this is just another example. The lease term, including any secondary periods, is for the major part of the asset economic life. Let's say you are leasing out a machine, a machine has a unit life of 50 years, and maybe you are leasing it out to, to someone for 49 years or 48 years. At the same time, you are not a fool. You cannot just give someone uh, to stay in the, in the asset for all those years, almost the unit life of that asset without getting anything. We believe that what, what the guy is giving you back is actually worth more, can actually cover the value of that asset of yours, right? So this is how we go about identifying on whether this is a finance lease or an operating lease. So in an exam, you can have a lot of examples. These are just examples. Let's finish up with this example. Maybe look here. At the inception of the lease, at the start of the lease, the present value of the lease payments amounts to at least a substantial of the fair value of the lease asset, making a lot of sense. At the beginning of the, at the maybe after just buying the asset, the asset is, is worth $1,000. But someone pays you three, $300 for six years, or maybe for five years. That gives a total of $1,500. Of course, that's before discounting. If you discount it, it will reduce a lot. Let's say it will end up at 1,300. So it's obvious that that's the finance lease because actually what you will receive is much more, actually can, can cover what you gave out to acquire that asset before leasing it out. So these are what the, what these are the factors you should all be putting into consideration when making your decision, right? All right, and then we just have these other examples here. The leased assets are of a specialized nature so that only the leasee can use them without major modifications being made. This one is also obvious. You know, uh, you may lease out something 
something of a specialized nature, something that you cannot just obtain anyone else to use. So if those assets are of a specialized nature, we really believe that actually uh, you are just going to recoup everything that you need. But also let's say you have the told, the lessee will compensate the lesser for their losses if the lease is canceled. Now just hear something like this. The lessee promises you, you lease, you lease out something to the lessee and the lessee promises to compensate all losses if the lease is canceled. That makes sure, that protects, protects you. You bought something, you are not, you are not, you are not sure on whether we will recoup your amount, but also the lessee just say that no problem, I'll just provide for any losses. So that puts you at, 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 at peace. So anything that puts the lesser at peace, actually we believe that uh, it's the finance lien. Anything that puts the lesser safe. So you have something like that. You can just have uh, other examples like gains or losses, maybe from fluctuations in the fair value of the residual. No problem, we'll learn about something called the residual value guarantee. I just needed you to have this concept. And also it says the lease can continue for the lease of the secondary period. Don't worry about this. We also say about this secondary and the primary period. Don't worry about this. All right, now we have about seconds. This can end up in seconds. So it just ended, ends up in seconds, just join back. For the minutes are just going to be over. So just go join back and then we start the computations now from the LZ point of view. If it just exists, we just turn back and we proceed. If there'll be any question, we also have to do with that. Mm -hmm. 